Welcome again. In this video, we're going to kind of finish up the sublinks here in the settings category or the settings section. And uh, we've, we're on the media tab. <coughs> and basically, up here, we're in another video, we're going to talk about the media and um, all the things you can do with that library, add new. Um, but right now, this is kind of the configuration settings that would apply um, to whatever media that you do get uploaded to your site. And it, it, it's very basic. Uh, the size is listed below will determine the maximum dimensions and pixels to use when inserting an image into the body of a post. So you get to specify your thumbnail size. Uh, by default, they're both at 150. Uh, there's a checkbox here to see if you want to crop the thumbnail to exact dimensions. Um, otherwise, uh, normally the thumbnails are going to be proportional. And then you've got a, a medium size picture, okay, and it's at 300 and 300 and a large size at one, uh, 1024 by 1024. <clears throat> and again, these are the defaults, but basically this is just configuring what the thumbnail, the medium size, and the large size of any given picture that you um, get into your media manager is going to be and um, how it's going to manifest itself as a picture in your post. So typically you can leave these alone. Where you might find these come into play is if you're playing around with some templates, uh, whether this site's going to be you know, wide or narrow, um, things like that. Moving down to the privacy, very, very easy. You've got two, only two options here. This is basically blog visibility. The first one, uh, you know, I would like my blog to be visible to everyone, including search engines like Google, Sphere, Technorati and archive, archivers. Um, usually this is checked by default because that's going to give you the most coverage, obviously. Um, otherwise, I would like to block search engines but allow normal visitors. Um, there's some very specific business reasons why you might do that if your business plan calls for it, but for the vast majority, you're going to want to just leave that first radio button checked because that's, like I said, going to give you the most coverage with the search engines. Um, next is the permalinks. And um, basically, this kind of helps you choose what format you want your uh, links to, to show. So basically, when you create posts and pages, your platform is going to create URLs that when you have them over in the categories and links to them, it will render the page that, of, of the content that you created. And this kind of is also known as uh, SEF, or Search Engine Friendly URLs. Um, the default, of course, will show a, a, a number, okay, and then you've got another option, day and name, month and name, numeric, where you can make your own custom structure. Um, arguably, maybe the other two, day and name or month and name, would be a little bit more search engine friendly because it's actually going to have the name of the post within the URL. Otherwise, this is just a number. Now. I mean, honestly, in today's age with SEO, content is king. So um, even though this is important when it comes to search engine optimization, it uh, it certainly is not going to outweigh if your content adds value to its users. So, uh, but just something to think about. Then, of course, at the bottom here, you have an optional setting. If you like, you may enter custom structures for your category and tag URLs here. And it says, you know, for example, using topics uh, as your category base would make your category links have topics as a basically look like a folder in the URL. Um, if you leave these blanks, the defaults will be used. So, again, you uh, might just it might be easier just to leave these blank than mess with it. So, totally optional. But the permalink settings are going to kind of um, give you some leeway and some options on how your URLs are structured when you create pages and posts. And then finally under the se section or settings section here at the bottom you have the miscellaneous settings and then here you're gonna I mean I really wouldn't change anything in here um, store uploads in this folder you're gonna have uh, when we talked about media and the media settings um, this is the folder that the content that people um, upload media into will, of course, go into. And if you want to create a new folder in your cPanel, you certainly can. It doesn't have to be uh, uploads or WP content forward slash uploads. Um, you can also select the full URL path to the files. Um, totally optional, and by default, it should be blank. 
and you also get to select how you want your content to be organized. Typically it's organized um, into month and year based folders. Um, that's usually very very standard and very common. Um, otherwise you can track links update times and there is a legacy uh, hack file that you can use uh, I think to give you a little bit further options on uh, how to upload things. So that is going to cover the settings section. You got general writing, reading, discussion, media, privacy, permalinks, and miscellaneous. And you're going to want to visit this section first because um, that's going to kind of uh, get the foundation of your platform uh, configured, if you will. Settings is basically your configuration area. And you're going to want to visit that first to make sure everything's as it should be or as you want it. And then that will make these other sections here uh, not only make a little bit more sense, but when you use those sections, they're going to behave in the manner that you specified in this area here. So, um, next we're going to move on to the top. We're going to go straight into posts and just kind of go down the list here. So, I will see you in the next video. Thanks.